from Walmart. I'm there today. I'm walking near the electronics section and there are some movie compilations and they're organized by actor or actress and you get 10 of them. 10 movies for the each actor or actress. Does Tom Cruise really need a 10 pack of movies? Has Tom Cruise really made 10 movies worth watching? Does anybody need 10 Tom Cruise movies? This is Kurt Berglund with the first part of a two-part demo of the Baseball Guru free baseball cards and dice simulation that is available on their website. Did I mention it's for free? There are about a dozen teams that you can download also free. And on top of that, to download uh, their seasons or special sets, you will find the prices to be certainly very, very worthwhile. What we're going to do tonight is to walk through the process for playing the game and to do about three innings of a ball game following these rules uh, so you can make a decision for yourself about whether or not you would like to purchase and download the PDFs and print those babies for your own use. Um, yeah. So before we get to that, let's show you some of the logistics that I talked about in my other video, but we're gonna go over in some detail in the setup process for the, for the three innings we'll play tonight. When you download the Baseball Guru instructions, this is what you get. You get one page, both sides, two pages, both sides, three pages, both sides, and the very start of a fourth page, and this is it. So the instructions take basically three sheets of paper, both sides. Now, having said that, on the instructions, um, almost a full sheet, a full side of paper is about making your own league. Uh, so if you can handle that on your own, you're really down to five sides of paper that you need to read or look at before you're ready to play. So it's pretty much print and play. The charts for the game are the rest of your download. They go on pages like this. This is one sheet. A second sheet, but this has a baseball diamond on it, so it doesn't, I'm not counting it. So we have three sides of paper, and now we have five sides of paper. So we have uh, five sides of paper for instructions and five sides of paper for charts. And that's it, and you're ready to play. What you need for the game are three D6s, or as I call them, red, white, and bleh. The two teams I've printed are the same ones I showed you uh, last week. They are the 1996 New York Yankees, the World Series champions, and the World Series losers in 1996, the Atlanta Braves. So what I'm going to do is to show you how to read one of these cards. Uh, for both the pitcher and the hitter, and I'm going to show you how to set up your lineup sheet in a way that I think will be helpful, and then we'll get rolling. So, let's get to the cards. These are the cards for Baseball Guru. So, we're going to look uh, at first the hitter's card, which in this case is Tim Raines, and then we'll do the pitcher card. 
Each card in the upper left corner is set up for rotisserie or draft style baseball where you can know their salary going into it. And there's a whole system for setting that up. If you've played uh, fantasy or rotisserie baseball, you kind of get the drift, but it's a salary system. <coughs> Excuse me, too much vaping. Then you get the team year and name, the player name and position. Now this tells us that um, he is neither a plus or minus outfielder, and that's gonna be important in just a few minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, each player is rated, even the pitchers, for steal, run, and power. These could come up later. They're also rated for pressure and then there are some very, very basic stats and an injury possibility rating. All of these are for uh, times reaching base or a strikeout. The roles we will go over as soon as we start the game, but basically this is the hitters, the row, the, the rows are for hitters. The columns tell you are, are for the pitcher. Um, all right, so if we look at Maddox, for example, he also gets a dollar figure for his salary. 96 Braves, he's the pitcher. You could get a relief pitcher or you could get both a starting and relief pitcher uh, designation here. This is Maddox's um, batter card. He is rated also for steel, run, and power and dealing with pressure. These are his pitcher ratings, B, C, and A, and eight innings pitched. If he goes beyond that, then he starts to gain first a letter so he turns in the ninth inning, he goes to a C for hits, and he keeps the walk of, of the, the strikeout of C and the walk of A. And then in the 10th inning, he would draw, he would hold the C and gain and lose a letter on the strikeouts and the walk. So he'd be a, a, a D for strikeouts and a B for walks. And then in the 11th, he would drop to a D for hits and so on. So you rotate back and forth between the hits dropping one and then the strikeouts and walks dropping one if they go past their fatigue inning. All right, now, before we begin, I wanna tell you what the charts are. If we roll between a 663 and a 665, you get a special event or what some games call a rare play chart. You can have an injury if you roll a 666 on the batter's card or if it's directed by a different chart. All right, on the back side. If a runner, if you make an out and there's a runner on base, what happens? All of this tells you it's pretty quick and easy. If you are interested in stealing a base, it's broken out by catcher's arm, whether it's plus, neutral, or negative, and then based on the base that you would like to steal. This side is nothing, it's just a diamond. And your last set of charts are the offensive charts, hit and run, sacrifice, and a squeeze play. On the reverse side, as you might guess, your defensive strategy, attempt to pick off, infield in, outfield in, and outfield deep and or guarding the lines. All right, so those are the charts. 
Now, before we begin the game, one of the things that's helpful I have learned in the couple games that I've played here is if you do your infield and outfield ratings. How do you do that? Well, I'm holding in my hand the Atlanta Braves. So let's start with the outfield. The outfield ratings. I'm looking for an outfielder with a plus or a minus. An outfield with nothing next to him is a zero. So Grissom is in center, although it doesn't matter where you play these guys. Jermaine dies in left. His arm is a minus. I'm making note of that on my scorecard, but he's a zero. And Justice is a zero. He's in right. So the three Atlanta outfielders are all zeros. That means that you do not add or subtract from the rolls for their outfield play. They're neutral. Now let's see if that's true for the infield. The infielders I'm starting in this game are Jeff Blauser at short. He's nothing, but he's a minus on the double play. We're going to come back to that in a minute. Chipper Jones is at third. He's neutral. Fred McGriff is at first. He's neutral. Mark Lemke is at second. He gets a plus. So the infield is a plus one because we have three neutrals and one positive. So the plus one. So this will subtract from the Yankees' uh, <clears throat> base hits. But if we look at the double play ratings, we have uh, a minus double play for Blouser. We have a minus double play for Chipper Jones. And so what that does is it affects uh, the double play chart advancing a runner. Uh, Lemke is a, is a is nothing. So we have a t minus two double play for the Braves. So when the runners are advancing and they're trying to turn a double play, it's going to be difficult. Let's look at the Yankees. Their outfield has Tim Raines in left. He's neutral. Paul O'Neill in right. He's neutral. Bernie Williams in center, also neutral. So they are neutral in the outfield. Let's look at the infield. It's Wade Boggs, neutral at third. Derek Jeter, neutral at short. Tino Martinez, neutral at first. And Mariano Duncan, uh, neutral at second base. And that's it. So the Yankees in the infield and in the outfield and at double play are all neutral. All right. So we know that going in. Now what I've done is to mark that on my uh, scorecard. So the Braves have a plus one on their infield defense. What that means is that the last single in each column is out. So this means that for Reigns against an A hit pitcher, he'd go to 122 to 151. The 152 would be an out. 131 to 212. The 13 would be an out. 132 to 222. The 222 would be an out. It would just go to 221. Against a D pitcher, 141 to 235 changes to 234, and the 35 becomes an out. And against an E pitcher, 153 and 263. Uh, 263 becomes the out. The range goes only to 262. Now, the instructions tell us that a D rating is the league average. It also tells us that E is not terrible. There are special adjustments for two more ratings. And that is if a pitcher is rated an F, and they can be, 
that creates a new column and there's ways to handle that, or they could also be rated an A+. So there are five ratings here, but then there are two additional ratings, which are just modifications from the A and the E. And if we run across an A-plus pitcher or an F pitcher, we will deal with that at that time. That is it. We are ready to start uh, Baseball Guru Baseball. So Tim Raines stands in against Greg Maddox. We're going to read the dice the same way every time. Red first, white second, and bleh third. So it's red, white, and bleh. The pitch to Reigns, and we are underway from, let me make sure we're in the sight here of the camera. There we go. All right, so we have a 232. So for this, <clears throat> first thing we're doing is we're finding it on the card. Uh, and... There are none. There's nothing in the A column, so a hit can't be affected. There's nothing in the... And there's no strikeouts I'm seeing. No, no error, no, no walks. All right, so what that tells us then is that this is an out. So what happens? Well... A roll on this, and I'm getting this off of the advancing runners on an out chart. A roll from a 111 to a 262 is an outfield out. Find the power rating and, and determine who made the play from the chart. All right. So, <clears throat> the power rating, uh, two. We're in, we have a 232, so we're in the outfield out range. The power rating for range is a C. And we're going to look down here for who fielded the ball. And it's the left fielder that fielded the ball because there's nobody on base, and so there's no one to advance. So we look at fielded the ball, and that's the roll. And there's one out. All right, next is Boggs. I don't know if these lineups are right. Not going to claim that. 662 is the um, roll. Now, we just missed a special event because that would be 663. So I'm just filling you in on that one. But we missed it. So we're back to advancing a runner in and out. Who fielded the ball? 662 is a ground infield ground out. Who fielded that one? We look at the chart. And it's the third baseman. That's Chipper Jones throws to McGriff. And there's two down in the first inning. Next up is Jeter. Never heard of him. The pitch from Maddox is a 142. A 142 puts him on the B column for a hit. We look down the B column for Maddox, and that lands in the single chart. And so Jeter is aboard with a single because Maddox is a B when it comes to hits. And that's how you tell if you got a hit. Now, we're going to steal a base so you see how to do that. Jeter is aboard at first base. We're going to look up our catcher. Now, we know that Eddie Perez in 1996 was Greg Maddox's personal catcher. So I started him. Now, he has a neutral arm. We know that because there's no marks next to his uh, catcher rating. So we're looking here in the middle of the chart 
Use this chart with a catcher without any arm reading. That's Perez. We're gonna steal second. Now, Jeter's stealing is a B. He's a B. So, a 111 to a 463, he's safe. A 464 to a 666, and he's out. So let's see if he makes it. Maddox to the belt, checks Jeter, the pitch home. There he goes, and it's a 543. A 5.43, and Eddie Perez shot him down from here to Okoboji. And that's three outs in the Yankee first as Jeter is shot down two to six if you're scoring at home. And if you are, yikes. All right, so now Andy Pettit comes out for the Yankees to do the bottom of the first, and he will face Marquise Grissom, Jeff Blauser, and... Chipper Jones, same thing now. We're reading the red, white, and blue dice in that order. You see Pettit's letter ratings at the bottom here. C for hits, C for strikeouts, B for walks. We get a 435. So we're looking here for a 435, and we see it's in the walks. So we're gonna check for a B, see if it matches Pettit's walk numbers. 435 is within Grissom's walk range, and it's in Pettit's B walk column. So Grissom draws a walk, something, by the way, he hated to do when he was a Milwaukee Brewer. But let's not talk about the 90s and the Milwaukee Brewers because I'll start sobbing and then it's just a whole thing. All right, so now Jeff Blauser comes up with Grissom on first. We're not gonna walk him. Uh, we're not gonna have him try to steal. What we're gonna do is have Blauser bunt so you can see how that works. And <clears throat> this is the, first we have to check Blauser's bunt rating. Uh, and to do that, we check the run rating of the batter. So it's a B. And under sacrifice, we're looking here. Then we look across. It could be safe, could be a sacrifice, could be a fielder's choice. Um, he could be a pop-up, which would be the hold number, or a double play. Let's see what happens here. Blauser's a B. It's a 354 I rolled, and that is a successful sacrifice. And so the batter is out, and Grissom moves up to second base, and that's how you do a sacrifice in the game. All righty. Next is Chipper Jones. Grissom's on second, Pettit to the belt, he throws home, it's a 651. A 651, if you play enough of this, you realize the 600s are typically nothing. So now we have an out to deal with. How does the runner advance? Well, a roll from a 325 to a 666 is an infield ground out. So now we look at the batter's running rating and Chipper is a C runner. We rolled a 651, and runner's not forced because Grissom's on second. He holds. Okay, so actually the 651, if we look down here, goes to the third baseman, and so... Boggs fields it, checks Grissom at second, and makes the throw to Tino Martinez for the out. So Grissom holds at second. Now it's McGriff. Headed to the belt, checks Grissom. The pitch home to McGriff is a 522. 522, we're in the walk zone, but 
Pettit is a B. So we look here and it doesn't go deep enough, so it's an out. But where is it an out? Uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have rolled again. 522, runner not forced. That is a ground out to shortstop, and that retires the Braves in the bottom of the first. And that's one inning of Baseball Guru. All right, here come the Yankees for inning number two. Paul O'Neill facing Greg Maddox. Then it'll be Bernie Williams, and then it'll be Tino Martinez. Again, I apologize if I'm off on the lineups. I was going to look them up, but then I didn't. So Maddox winds and delivers to O'Neill. It's a 415. So we look for where that is, and that's nowhere. Almost a walk, but it's not. So now we look at the... Who fielded the ball chart? Uh, 415 is an infield ground out. We know that because this tells us. And then the 415 is fielded by... Hmm. Oh. It's popped up. It's a pop-up to... Uh, blouser, and there's one gone. Now it's only now it's uh, Bernie Williams. Pitch from Maddox is a 631. The 600s most often are nothing, and sure enough, that's the case on this. A roll from 325 to 666 is an infield ground out. So we're looking for 631. And it is a ground out to third base. That's Chipper Jones. He throws to McGriff. And there's two down. Now it's Tino Martinez. Five thirteen. Five thirteen puts us maybe in a walk range. Maddox is a B. And we don't make it. So it's an out. 513 is a ground out number. And Maddox gets him on the 6 3 put out from Blouser to McGriff. So it's a 1 2 3 inning for Maddox in the second. What you should see from this point is that the interaction between the batter and the pitcher is pretty strong here. So, uh, for example, I had a 513 on this roll. Because Maddox has good control, he gets a B rating for walks. But notice what happens if you're a D or an E pitcher, Tino draws a walk. So good pitchers keep batters from reaching base. And it's not just an accident, it's because of the ratings that are on the pitcher's card. All right, bottom of the second. Here comes the Braves, and it'll be Die, and then Justice, and then Lemke. Pitch to Jermaine is a 6-12, still nothing. Uh, it's a ground out on the infield, and it's a ground out to Wade Boggs. He throws to Martinez, and there's one gone. Now it's Justice. Two fifty-two for Dave. We are in the error range. Uh, hmm. Now I'm confused.
All right. All right, so we have Okay, the error is one base. We determine who that is by who fielded the ball. So that is a shortstop error. And your runners can advance further than one base based on a second roll. We don't have anybody on base at the moment. So what that is, is an E6 on Jeter, and Justice reaches on the air with one out. So you're again, you're, you're treating that like they're advancing on and out, because you're looking at who fielded the ball, that tells you who made the error, and then you can determine if there's someone on, you use these charts to determine do they go another base or not? Does the base runner go another base? Lemke is up now. There's one out. And Pettit, 136. So 136 for Lemke. Hits are a C for Pettit. That falls within this range. So it's a base hit for Lemke. Um, okay, so here we go. So what we do in that case, when Lemke singles and Justice reaches second, we check Justice's running rating, and we go advancing runners on a hit chart. But the problem is that Justice's running rating is a D, which is not fast. And so we're going to hold him at second, but there is a chart for advancing runners on a hit, and that's what we would look at. The second thing that's important there is that you, as a manager, make a strategic decision about whether or not you are going to run the bases aggressively. If you are, you have a better chance of being safe, but you can also be thrown out um, as well, depending upon the outfielder's throwing arm, which is factored into the chart as well. So... It's first and second now with one out in the bottom of the second for Eddie Perez. Let's see what happens with him. Two, two, five. A two, two, five for Perez becomes what we look at for a strikeout rating. Pettit is a C. A two, two, five becomes an error. All right, so now we look back at our advancing on an, on an out chart to figure out who made the error. Two, two, oh, I'm sorry, we used the original roll. Two, two, five is an outfield out. Two, two, five is an error by the left fielder. That's Reigns who makes the mistake. And now uh, we can try and advance. So Justice is on second. Uh, his running rating, he's not forced. He's a D. Oh, outfield, D. Yeah, and there's no sense in going here. All right. 
All right, so we're loaded now for Maddox. Maddox comes to the plate, one out, bases full of Braves, and Pettit in trouble. We're gonna play the infield in to show you what that looks like. Um, and we're gonna say that we're running aggressively for the Braves with one out. Contact play is on. So here's the infield in. But first we've got, and this is the results for running aggressively. All right, the runner on third is Justice, he's a D. And notice that if you run conservatively, your results will be very, very different. All right, so if the ball's hit to the infield, we will look to that chart. Maddox swings away. It's a 2-5-2 two, two for Maddox. On his, we have a C strikeout range, and Maddox strikes out. Now it's Grissom. Two outs, base is dripping. Pettit's pitch is a 315. A 315 becomes nothing. So it's going to be an out. Who makes the out? Three fifteen is an infield ground out, and that's a ground out to Duncan, and that retires the Braves in the second. So they load the bases, but they don't score. Top of the third, our last inning in this demo. Be Girardi, Duncan, and Pettit, and then the Braves will bat. 4.25, we look down here, we're looking for his strikeout or walk number. Strikeout is a C, it's not in there. Walk is an A, it's not in there. So it's got a regular old out. 425 is an infield ground out and a 425 on our chart becomes a ground out to Blouser. One gone. Now it's Duncan. Five twenty-two. Oh, I'm sorry. Five eleven. Five eleven. Looking on Duncan's card, it's nothing. Check our chart. Five eleven's an infield grounder, and this one goes to Blouser. Second out. Now it'll be Pettit. 146. 146. Is nothing. So we go back to who fielded it. He did make contact. It's a 146 is an outfield out. And that flies out to left. So it's a one, two, three, third for Maddox. Go to the bottom of the third. And this will be the last half inning. Pettit will face Blouser, Jones, and McGriff. Five twenty-four. If Pettit was a D for walks, that would be a walk, but he's not, so it's nothing. Pettit's walk to letter is a B, so that's nothing. 524 for Blouser is an infield out, and that becomes a ground out to Jeter. Next is Chipper Jones. Four 
324. Strikeout rating for Pettit is a C. A 324 is in Pettit's strikeout rating, and that's a strikeout. Now it's McGriff. Four fifty five is a walk, maybe. Walk letter is a B. It is a walk. McGriff draws a walk off Pettit, and with two outs, he's down at first base for Jermaine Dye. Two fifty four. is nothing. So we go to the out chart. It's an outfield out. Oops, 254, sorry, left field. Didn't need to re-roll, fly out to left. All right, so let's pull this together a little bit. I got a little confused by the charts and when you refer to the outs and the hits and a base runner advancement, but all that could be pretty quickly ironed out with a little more experience with the game. If you appreciate and place a value on uh, the pitcher being able to shut the batter down from being able to do certain things, what some people call batter-pitcher interaction, this game, I think, is one you might like. There are no lefty-righty splits, and there are, as far as I can tell, 24 players printed per team. Now, either one of those are deal-breakers for some folks, but if they're not deal-breakers for you, this game is pretty easy to work through, and you'd find, I think, that it flows pretty well once you roll more than the two, well now, two innings and three, two games and three innings that I've rolled. Uh, I did not use, but there is a section on the pressure part of each player's card. And that does affect outcomes based on their pressure, their ability to, to deal with pressure. It's an advanced rule. So if you don't think that that, plays a role in baseball, and I know that sabermetrically there's a variety of opinions about that, you don't have to use it. So if you look, for instance, on uh, David Cohn at the bottom of his card here, it says the pressure for him, his pressure rating is standard. Well, you don't have to use that. It's an advanced rule, and you can get around it if you want to. However, one of the advantages, it seems to me, of Baseball Guru is that there are a lot of strategic options. Are you going to play the infield in or back? Are you going to hit and run? Are you going to bunt? That stuff's normal. Guarding the lines isn't. Running aggressively or conservatively isn't. You don't find that in other games. And so uh, the whole... There's there's a layer of strategic options in the game, even though there are not lefty-righty splits. There's a layer of strategic options that some people might enjoy. That's my report for your walkthrough of a three-inning game, three-inning demo of Baseball Guru. If you'd like me to, to see me do nine innings, probably more smoothly than this just went, let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Got a ton more stuff coming in the rest of this month, demos and new features coming next month. Uh, and I appreciate your subscription. Thank you so much. So long, everybody.